Hello everyone this is Void Spirit. I'm here to bring you guys amazing fanfiction that you will surely enjoy. But before we start please subscribe and like the video for more amazing content. CH26. Unexpected Reunion. After Hajime rented a room. Chloe came downstairs a little embarrassed. Hajime bankrupted her where Rimuru and Sakura had gone as requested by Rimuru. Hajime was about to order something to eat when Rimuru returned. Hajime-kun. Wait. Don't order anything. Huh? I found a restaurant that serves Japanese-like food. Nani. Hajime had never eaten anything like the food of Japan since he came to this world. So upon hearing Rimuru's words he was left with much anticipation. Here look, you can go ahead. I want to get an ice cream first. Rimuru showed in the map he had of the city. It wasn't actually ice cream he was going to get. It was a candy called, Balel, that was very similar. Hajime went ahead excitedly, Yu and Shia followed him. Chloe approached Rimuru and spoke. Ri. Rimuru san. Chloe called out to him in embarrassment. You may speak. He gave a gentle smile to reassure her. Thank you. She hugged Rimuru's arm with a happy expression. Thank you. He stroked her head and spoke in her ear, cute. She turned red and gave an embarrassed laugh. Ehehe. Rimuru san is very cute too. Really? He scratched the back of his neck embarrassed. In that I agree. Sakura spoke and gave Rimuru a kiss. When their lips parted he spoke. Sakura-chan is a beauty too. Sakura turned at his words and Rimuru spoke. Thank you for the compliments. Then shall we have ice cream? I've never tasted it, but it must be good. Let's go. The three of them left the inn. Hajime was very excited about the Japanese food. He asked a few people on the way about what the food was like and they all replied that it was differentiated and delicious. This cheered him up even more. Shia and Yu also wanted to try the food after seeing Hajime's reaction. They were talking and arrived at the restaurant, which was also an inn. Suspire no clues from Shimizu-kun today either. Where did you go? Aiko don't worry, we know he's safe. That's right. Shimizu-lin's room had no signs of a struggle and Shimizu-kun is a black mage he's certainly fine. Knight Commander David and his student Yuka tried to cheer her up. One of Aiko's students had disappeared one week ago and showed no sign of showing up. Just as Yuka said there was no sign of a struggle in his room. So they knew he went of his own accord, but Aiko cared a lot about her students and couldn't help but worry. Currently they were eating at the Water Fairy Restaurant, Guest House. This name came from the legend that a fairy couple lived on the lake in this town. The food and rooms here were very luxurious and Aiko and the students found it too much, but they gave in when people said, it's nothing compared to the greatness of the apostles, or, it's the least we could offer to the goddess of the good harvest. The goddess of good harvest, is what people called Aiko because of her powers to manipulate harvest, she hated that nickname. I'm sorry for troubling you, it's no use dwelling on it. Shimizu-kun is certainly fine, now let's eat. They placed their orders and after a while received their food. They were praising the delicious food that was similar to Japanese when the door opened. The owner of the restaurant who was also a chef came to talk to them. What did you think of the meal? If you want anything, say so unceremoniously. No, everything is delicious today too. That cheers us up every day. Thank you for the compliment, but I'm sorry. I will only be able to serve those dishes today. A. Hey, you mean we won't be able to eat Nilshire, this world's version of curry, anymore? Yuka asked shocked. Yes. We are out of ingredients because of an upheaval in the Cordillera. Since that's where most of the ingredients are collected we don't have any more. Hum. What do you mean by unrest? A powerful group of adventurers has disappeared in the Cordillera. There seems to be some powerful magical beast there. The knights at the next tables were listening intently. They were all in a private room so the other customers did not hear. That's worrying. Everyone got depressed expressions. Then Foss the owner said something to reassure them. Don't worry. This will soon be taken care of. The director of the Adventurers Guild branch has personally sent a group to sort it out. I heard from some people that they're coming here today. The branch director? They must be powerful. The captain of the knights spoke curiously and in awe. The other knights seemed curious as well. At this moment voices could be heard from outside the room. Speak of the devil. It's them, gentlemen knights. If you want to talk to them hurry up. They will be leaving tomorrow. They could hear people talking. 
I already said I want to sleep in the same room, Hajime-san. You'll only get in the way, you and I need privacy so stay in another room. Have you seen you-san? Hajime-san said something cruel, ew. Hajime bad. If you want to blame someone, blame Rimuru and Chloe. They're the ones who aroused jealousy in you and made her propose this training. Aiko and the students were pale. Several questions were running through their minds. What name did they speak? Or, isn't that voice similar to that of? It was the name and voice of someone who had died. None of the students could speak anything. The riders were looking at them worriedly. Aiko broke the silence. Nagumo kun. Aiko ran to the door and opened it. She went towards the voices and I will three people sitting at a table. Nagumo kun. Sensei. Aiko's eyes were wide with surprise. The boy in front of her had nothing to do with Hajime Nagumo. Surely if they bumped into each other on the street she wouldn't recognize him. Yet in the conversation from before, not only did the name, Hajime, appear, but the name, Rimuru, also appeared. She also confirmed her suspicion with him saying, Sensei. It's you isn't it? I'm so happy. Hajime didn't want to meddle with his colleagues. The only one of his classmates he cared about was Kaori and a little with Shizuku who was his friend. He was cursing himself internally for speaking, Sensei, unintentionally. He was going to try to cover it up, but. Eh? Sensei. Is it Aiko-san? Rimuru arrived with an ice cream in his hand and Sakura and Chloe beside him. They were not clinging to him as they were also drinking ice cream. Rimuru and Chloe were surprised. Chloe introduced herself to all of Rimuru's class. So she knew Aiko. When Chloe introduced herself to the students, several boys fainted from the blood that came out of their noses, but the girls were very nice to her. After they learned that it was actually her who killed the Reaper, the students began to treat her as a beautiful and powerful goddess. There were some who even bowed when they saw her. Rimuru kun. It's great to see that you guys are okay, but why is Chloe Chan with you? Wait, what actually happened to Nagumo kun? Aiko seemed to have several questions. Hajime realized that now that his brother was seen there was no way he could pretend to be someone else and spoke. If you want to talk, why don't you stop yelling first? Aiko realized that all the customers were looking at her, and she called everyone into the private room. Then came the questions. Rimuru decided that he would not answer questions about Hajime. Because if Hajime wanted to tell, he would tell them himself. Hajime decided to simply ignore the questions and order the Japanese food. I'll bring it in a little while. Foss spoke and left the room. Aiko couldn't understand how Hajime could place an order in this situation and was flabbergasted. How can you sit down and order so naturally? What happened to you? And who are these girls? Nagumo kun Rimuru kun, explain it to me now. Well, what happened is a very vague question. Rimuru was thinking about how to answer, but Hajime spoke first. Well, I'm hungry. I haven't eaten in a day, so let me order. And these are Shia. You. I'm Hajime, San, S girlfriend. They spoke together. Both Aiko and the students were surprised that their classmate came back from the dead with two beautiful girlfriends. Hajime could already feel the shower of envy from the boys. Shia Chan is exaggerating. Rimuru spoke up. Yeah, she basically lied. Sakura agreed with Rimuru's words. That's right, Shia. Don't go naming yourself my girlfriend like that. Hajime san, but you took away my first kiss. I told you that that. Nagumo kun. Hajime heard Aiko's voice calling him. Yes. Don't tell me you didn't come to meet us because you were gallivanting around? Unforgivable. Sensei is going to give you a scolding. Aiko didn't even hear the others talking about it being a lie. Her mind could only picture Hajime with the two girls in his arms and laughing like some third rate villain. Hajime just sighed at the irritated Aiko. Rimuru and Chloe explained the misunderstanding and she calmed down. Ah. I'm sorry about that. By the way Chloe Chan why are you here? Did something happen in the capital? Aiko asked thinking Chloe had come to meet them, but Chloe undid the misunderstanding. No, no, Aiko-san I didn't even know you were here. I'm here with Rimuru-san. Eh? With Rimuru-kun? That's right, he is my fiancé after all. Eh? Chloe hugged Rimuru's arm as she said that. Aiko and the students couldn't hide their surprise. Is it? Is it true Rimuru-kun? Aiko asked to confirm. Yes, that's right. He spoke and gave Chloe a kiss. When he did that a pressure came down in the room. 
How dare you kiss the goddess? The boys seemed to speak with their looks. Chloe San, were you two already engaged when we met? Yuka asked. Yes. Yuka was about to ask why she hadn't told them, but she had a more important matter. Aiko then spoke up. And who is she? Aiko pointed to the pretty pink haired girl who was very close to Rimuru. Ah, she is. I am Sakura, also Rimuru san's fiance. Sakura stepped forward. When she spoke, the envious looks increased even more on Rimuru. To her fellow boys, Rimuru just released some demon lord hockey, and they sounded cold. At this moment, Aiko didn't want to make the same mistake again and asked, Rimuru kun, that's not true, right? Huh? Of course it is. Rimuru stroked Sakura's head as he spoke. Sakura looked happy and embarrassed at the same time. Aiko, who realized the truth, exploded. Rimuru kun, that's very immoral. You can't marry two girls. That's not right. It's immoral. And who cares about morality? What? Rimuru considered himself someone who did his best, but he did not consider himself a saint. Rimuru had no desire to follow the morality that most people followed. Not least because he had already killed several people for the benefit of his country and this was not something that was considered morally right. So Rimuru didn't care about common morality and just followed his own principles. In his principles it would be wrong for him to be with another girl because it would hurt Chloe, but Chloe didn't care so it was okay. Aiko who couldn't understand this asked the girls about their relationship. I will never abandon Rimuru san. No matter how many girls he has. Chloe spoke this and hugged herself to Rimuru. The sound of gnashing teeth from the boys was audible. Worst of all for the boys was Chloe's expression. Pure happiness to be with her beloved, without a hint of bitterness or anger, only love. I won't abandon him either no matter what happens. Sakura spoke and kissed Rimuru's cheek with a happy expression. Aiko and the students seeing people so in love didn't know what to say. Then Foss arrived with the food. The group started eating as if nothing had happened. They were really excited about the food. Hum. It's just like Japan. Mine hasn't arrived yet. Chloe seemed happy with the Japanese food. Hajime seemed to feel like she and the others enjoyed food. Rimuru was sad as his food had not arrived yet. Here Rimuru san. Taste some of mine. Say ah. Thank you Sakura. Enhok it's really great. Rimuru san. Sakura gave Rimuru some food and Chloe looked jealous that Rimuru was spoiling her so much and poked him embarrassed. Ah. Can I taste some of yours, Chloe? He did the same to her and she looked happy. She hugged his arm a little embarrassed and gave him a kiss on the cheek. Ehehe. Thanks. Aiko and the students seeing the three's display of affection couldn't say anything more. Aiko then changed her target to Hajime. Nagumo kun. How did you get out of the dungeon? I worked hard. The students were confused by those words. They thought he had been rescued by Rimuru who was super strong. One of the boys then asked. So it wasn't Rimuru who rescued you? No I had nothing to do with it. When I found him, he was already on his way out. Rimuru spoke before Hajime could. Then Aiko and the students had become even more curious. Nagumo-kun how did you survive down there? I really worked hard. Rimuru thought he did the right thing by not talking about Hajime. Hajime seemed not to want to tell about his experiences to his classmates. Why did your hair turn white? It was the result of me trying my best. Why didn't you come back to us? I had no reason to. Hajime didn't care about his colleagues. He was thinking of letting Kaori know that he was okay, but now it was no longer necessary. Hajime thought that now that Aiko knows of his survival she will surely warn the others. He might ask her to warn about Hayama. Hajime would only return if his brother wanted to talk to his colleagues. Give me some concrete answers. Aiko yelled at Hajime as he was eating his curry and giving vague answers without even looking at them. The captain of the knights David, who was in love with Aiko, couldn't stand to see her being ignored and approached the table. P.A. He punched the table to look intimidating, but it didn't seem to work much. David then spoke up. Oi oi, you. You were being questioned by Aiko, answer her seriously. Sai we are eating now. Behave yourself. David was ignored as Aiko. David saw that Hajime would not give a clear answer and changed his target to Shia. I tell you to behave yourself. Having a dirty animal sharing the same table. You are the one who has no manners. At least let me cut off those ugly ears so she looks more human. Everyone in the group clenched their eyes dangerously close as they heard David's words. 
Hajime and Yu were already thinking of a way to make this guy suffer. Shia shivered at the look on David's face, she had been through many cities and seen many discriminating looks, but this was the first time someone had said that to her. Yu held Shia's hand to calm her down and gave David a cold look. David flinched at that look, but his shame and anger at having flinched in front of a girl overcame his fear. What's with those eyes? Even though you are not an apostle of God you are trying to challenge a knight Templar. David looked annoyed. Iko and the students tried to calm him down, but he didn't listen to them. Yu just looked at David who had his pride easily wounded and spoke. A little man. You heathen. I'll send you to hell along with that animal. David muttered this and tried to pick up the sword at his side. As the chance for carnage appeared, Iko, the students and the knights were scrambling to stop him. Rimuru did not move as he knew that no one in his group would have a problem facing David. Before David could pick up his sword. D-O-P-A-N an explosive sound resounded and David was thrown far away, he hit the wall and fainted. No one could understand what happened. Everyone was staring at the unconscious David in bewilderment. They then looked in the direction of the noise. There was something there that Aiko and the students knew from movies, but never thought they would see in this world. Hajime was holding the donner that had smoke coming out of its barrel. The Knights Templar didn't know exactly what happened, they only understood that Hajime did something. They stood up with their hands on their swords and made it rain murderous intent, but then they felt the storm of murderous intent coming from Hajime and sat down in their chairs sounding cold. Aiko and the students were also frightened by Hajime's pressure and said nothing. They just stood there perplexed. Hajime, seeing that no one would react, said. I don't care about you. I don't want a relationship with you. Besides I'm not going to say anything about what happened to me or what I'm going to do. I'm just here to work, so I'll continue my journey. By the way let's not interfere with each other. If you get in my way like you are now, I will kill you. None of them refuted Hajime's words. Shia looked discouraged so Hajime spoke to her. Shia. No need to be sad. That was just brainwashing from the church. HMHM. Lion doesn't need to care about the sheep's opinion. Hajime and you spoke in that order. Eh. Didn't I hear those words somewhere? Well, maybe blonde people tend to use that phrase. Rimuru murmured softly, and Chloe was the only one who understood his words. She and Rimuru had done a game of Thrones marathon on one of their dates. I know, it's just that I didn't know people thought my rabbit ears were gross. Rimuru gave Hajime a look that said, say something you idiot. He actually said that telepathically as well. Hajime realized he had to say something to comfort Shia. They're not disgusting in the least, right you? HMHM. Shia's ears are very cute. Thanks. Air. Hajime-san what do you think of my ears? Hajime didn't know how to answer. He thought for a while and said. They are. Cute. They really are. Shia looked disheartened by the weak compliment, so you interrupted. Hajime loves them. He was stroking your ears when you slept in the car. Shia's ears perked up happily. You. You. Hajime-san. You can stroke my ears anytime you want. She hugged Hajime's arm and the murderous atmosphere was no longer in the air. Some of the boys were saying things like, I was afraid of Nagumo, but now I'm just jealous. Or, pay attention to Rimuru. He has D.E.U. Chloe San and another beauty by his side. And things like that. After that one of the knights tried to convince Hajime to make weapons for humanity, but he denied it. Before they knew it, the group finished eating and were getting up to leave. Aiko then called out to Hajime. Nagumo-kun, you're really not coming back. She spoke in a low voice. No, I don't want to come back with you. After I finish the order I will leave. Why? I already told you. Right? I don't care about you guys. Aiko sulked then changed her target to Rimuru. Rimuru-kun and you? Huh. Obviously my brother is more important. His face and tone seemed to say. Why are you asking something so obvious? Hajime was at a high level of importance to Rimuru. To Rimuru Hajime had the same importance as his close people like Veldora, Benamaru, Shuna, Shian and Shizuku. The only people more important than Hajime to Rimuru were Chloe and Sakura. So if Hajime didn't want to return to his classmates Rimuru wouldn't return either. Rimuru thought about just letting Shizuku know that he was okay. The group filed out of the restaurant and a heavy atmosphere reigned. Everyone was thinking about the things Hajime must have gone through to survive. CH27. Search. 
What did you want to talk about? Hajime asked Rimuru. Rimuru called the group over to talk when they arrived at the inn. Shia was sleepy and went to sleep and Chloe was the same. Yu was next to Hajime sipping a drink that resembled soda. Sakura was on Rimuru's lap cuddling into his neck with her head resting on his shoulder as he gently stroked her hair. She occasionally gave him a kiss. I was thinking of enjoying this meeting with Sensei. Rimuru replied without taking his eyes off Sakura. Hajime didn't understand his words. What do you mean? We would have to stop by the capital to let Shirasaki san and the others know about Hayama, right? But now we've found Sensei and she must have a way to contact the kingdom. So it would be faster. I see. Hajime was thoughtful and Rimuru smelled great when Sakura's hair came close to his face. It smells like roses. She blushed at the compliment and gave Rimuru a kiss on the cheek. Hey. Will you two stop flirting at every possible opportunity? Hajime looked a little annoyed. Rimuru looked at him and spoke. I'll give it back to you. Hajime didn't understand, so he looked away. There was Yu pulling on his shirt and was holding out a spoon, on the spoon was a piece of pudding that the waitress had just delivered. Hajime. Ah. Hajime was not going to deny receiving food from Yu, so he ate. He seemed kind of embarrassed to do that after talking about Rimuru. Rimuru just laughed and spoke. You're wondering if we should tell Sensei about the mad gods, right? Hajime was a little surprised that Rimuru was able to guess and nodded in agreement. Hajime then spoke up. I think we should tell them. It would be a hoot if the gods manipulated the heroes group into them attacking us. Yes. Me too. We'll tell her tomorrow morning. No I think it's better to tell her today. Eh? Rimuru was looking at Sakura and when he looked at Hajime he was no longer there. He's not going to break into her room at night, is he? Rimuru thought. Well, there's nothing to do. Shall we go to sleep, Sakura? Chloe must be waiting. HMHM. They went upstairs. Chloe woke up when they came in. Sorry. Did we wake you up? Rimuru asked worriedly, but Chloe replied. Yes, but it's okay. Where are you going, Sakura-chan? Sakura looked like she was about to leave. Then Chloe called out to her. Good. I thought you guys would like to sleep together. Yes, but Sakura-chan is also engaged to Rimuru-san, so she has to sleep with him too. Is it? Is it really? She looked hesitant so Rimuru approached her and. Rimuru-san. He carried her like a princess to the bed and laid her down. She was completely red and he gave her a kiss. Then he lay down and hugged her from behind. I love you Sakura and I want to spend as much time with you as possible. Even when we are sleeping. She seemed happy with his words and covered his hand with her own. I love you too. I love Rimuru-san too. Chloe hugged Rimuru from behind and Rimuru gave her a kiss. Sakura seemed to want to hug Rimuru so he lay face up and slept with the two of them hugging him. For Rimuru of course the feeling of having two girls hugging him was great. He could feel their breasts touching him and look at their beautiful faces all he wanted. Sakura had her leg over his and Rimuru could feel that part of her. She looked a little embarrassed. Then it must have been on purpose. They fell asleep like that. Ilo couldn't sleep and was looking at the moon while thinking. She was happy that her students survived but sad that they did not return. She was thinking of several contradictory things and her face kept changing between happy and sad. Then she heard a voice. Why do you keep changing your expression, sensei? Hug. Nagumo-kun. Hajime was leaning on the door. She asked how he got in, and he said it was easy for a synergist. She then said that it was not right to enter a woman's room at night and he sighed. I just came here to have a talk with you. A talk with me. Did you? No I'm not coming back. Don't look at me expectantly. I just want to tell you something that I thought sensei would be calmer to hear. Hajime then told the story of the mad gods. Aiko listening to the story was dumbfounded, it was a lot of information to process. Well that's what I found out. I don't know what you are going to do with this information. If you want you can think it's a lie. Do whatever you want. Nagumo-kun, don't tell me that your journey is to deal with these mad gods. PFT. Of course not. I don't care one bit about this world or the people in it. I just want to find a way home. I only told you this because it was convenient for me, that's all. Aiko was left with an indescribable expression. She was happy that Hajime wasn't looking to war with the gods, but she was sad that he didn't care about this world or the people in it. Do you believe that? Yes. 
In fact if you go on the 100th floor of the Orcus dungeon you will know why they call it an ordeal. If you go there you will die instantly. I think you better warn the students. Hajime was about to continue, but Aiko spoke first. You know. Shirasaki-san hasn't given up on you yet. She said that in the hope that Hajime would come back, but. I know. My brother told me and it's about her the other matter I have with you. Ilo was sad, because if Hajime knew that would be no reason for him to come back. Hajime continued. I want you to send a message to Shirasaki, a note? Yes. I want you to tell her to watch out for Hayama. Huh? What do you mean? I heard that from my brother that you think that fireball hit me by accident right? You're not saying that. My brother has great analytical skills you know. He told me that after I died, Hayama was strangely more tense than the others. He also analyzed the skills of all the other classmates and discovered two interesting things. They all have great control over their magic and it would be hard for them to make a mistake and there are also few students who can use a high level fireball like that and Hayama is one of them. Actually it was Seal who noticed these things and others. Ilo didn't say anything and Hajime continued. My brother also saw Hayama staring at Shirasaki's bedroom door a few times, he probably couldn't stand to see the person he is passionate about so close to an incompetent, and decided that on the bridge would be the perfect opportunity. Well, that's what I have to say. Goodbye. Aiko said nothing and Hajime left the room. Aiko couldn't accept that one of her students tried to kill another and yet used such a cowardly method. She didn't know what to do with Hayama if this was true. Aiko would certainly not sleep well that night. Hajime returned to the inn and slept between Yu and Shia. The group woke up early to begin their search. They were on the way out of town when. Hajime kun, I think you are thinking of a rude way to dismiss them, but first let's hear them out. Rimuru spoke to Hajime. By them, Rimuru was referring to Aiko and the students who were waiting for them at the city gate. Hajime snorted in agreement and let them talk. Nagumo kun, Rimuru kun. Take us on the search together. You're looking for lost people, right? If we go together, it will be easier to search. Aiko approached and spoke. Hajime then replied, No, you'll only slow us down. We walk at a different pace. Hajime's argument was valid. The students and Aiko were on horseback and would not be able to catch up with the vehicles. The argument of more people doing a better search was also invalid because Hajime and Rimuru produced some golems that were possessed by lesser spirits. These golems don't get tired, so they are great on a quest. The students and Aiko didn't understand his words. Hajime thought it would be a pain to explain, so he took his motorcycle out of the treasure chest. Rimuru also took his motorcycle from infinity space. Rimuru's motorcycle was different from Hajime's, it was shorter and longer on the sides. It was shaped like a black wolf with white details and a horn on the front. It looked just like Ranga. Her eyes served as beacons and her mouth could unleash some attacks. Rimuru thought that since Ranga was his mount before, it should be now too. Hajime didn't understand the reason for a wolf until he found out about Rimuru's other world. Aiko got dumbfounded looks on their faces. Do you understand? Like I said, our speeds are different. Hajime kun, stop making excuses. Chloe spoke up. She didn't want the students she was close to to be fooled. Chloe knew that Hajime had a four wheeled vehicle stowed away. Hajime just looked away. Ilo then approached and told Hajime that he wanted to know more about what happened to him and also wanted to check if his other student Shimizu who had disappeared was not in the northern mountains. If Nagumo kun doesn't allow it, I will follow Nagumo kun. That would be problematic for Nagumo kun, right? She finished like this. Hajime kun, I think we should take them. Me too. They could create problems in the future, and I don't want to have to kill Rimuru san's colleagues. Rimuru and Sakura spoke in this sequence. The students sounded cold at Sakura's words. A beautiful woman talking about killing them so casually made even Aiko afraid. Hajime saw that it would be problematic to leave them here and spoke. All right. Are you sure, Hajime? You approached and asked. Yes. She's a teacher up to here, it will be problematic to leave her here. Wow, she's a very responsible teacher. Shia spoke impressed. At this moment Yuka called out to Hajime. But what are you going to do about the vehicles? Our horses won't be able to catch up with them. Ah. That. Hajime took out a six-wheeled vehicle from his treasure chest. This vehicle had three four-seat seats and a trunk, it also had some raised parts on the roof. On the outside it had blue and red details in the shape of spokes. 
This vehicle could fit many people and was made by Hajime and Rimuru. That's why it had details in both colors. Those who can't fit, go in the trunk. Hajime spoke and got into the vehicle. Hajime kun has to be kinder. Rimuru spoke and entered the vehicle through the middle door. The group was heading towards the mountain range. Hajime was sitting driving and Aiko was beside him to talk. Yu was next to Aiko and Shia was next to him. In the back seat was Chloe at the window and Rimuru was beside her with his hand on her waist. Sakura was beside Rimuru holding onto his arm. Yuka was next to Sakura a little uncomfortable and the other students were half squeezed into the back seat, the trunk and the roof. The students asked the girls several questions. They who were in puberty were curious about the relationship of Rimuru, Sakura and Chloe. The students were a little afraid of Rimuru after feeling his demon lord hockey, so they didn't ask him anything. Both the boys and girls had great respect for Chloe and would not ask about her relationship with Rimuru. They then tried to ask Sakura, but were met by her cold stare and gave up. Yu was focused on Aiko and Hajime's conversation and simply ignored them, but Shia got excited about the questions and said as much as she could, she may have exaggerated in some parts. Aiko told Hajime about Shimizu's disappearance and he seemed to think of something. Then she asked for more details about what he knew about Hayama trying to kill him. I can't believe it. He must have had some other motive. To kill me? Hajime asked in a wry tone. I. It must be some kind of mistake. I know Rimuru kun has great analytical skills, but Daisuke kun wouldn't do that. Aiko seemed unable to accept that one of her students tried to commit murder. Hajime just bugged out seeing that. Rimuru was listening to the conversation, but didn't think he had anything to add. So he was just flirting with the girls. The female students seeing them flirting gave cheering screams and the boys gritted their teeth. After a while Aiko who hadn't slept properly ended up falling asleep leaning against Hajime. If it was one of his classmates Hajime would have thrown away, but Aiko was always very nice to him in Japan. Hajime is nice to Aiko. You commented. Yes. I owe her a lot. Ooh. You? I'll go by your side on the way back. Okay. They arrived at the mountain range. They stopped at the foot of the mountain as it would be dangerous to drive up. Everyone got out of the car and Aiko apologized embarrassed for sleeping propped up on her student. Everyone was enjoying the view of the beautiful mountains. Hajime stowed the vehicle in the ring and turned to Rimuru. Ah. Yes. Rimuru pulled two golems from his infinite space. Both of them were white and five feet tall, but they had different appearances. The wind element golem looked like an eagle and the lightning element golem looked just like a Pikachu. Rimuru gave his orders telepathically and spoke. Go. What are they? Aiko asked impressed. The students also looked dumbfounded. They are the best golems for searching. One of them can do aerial search and the other is very fast and will do a quick search. I will use that too. Hajime took five metal birds from his treasure chest. These ones here will only be able to stay close by, but they are very useful too. The birds needed Hajime to control them, so they were not as good as the ones Rimuru helped make with spirits. Rimuru Hajime and the others advanced inside the mountain and after a while of walking the students looked tired. Hajime kun. Pikachu found something. Where? In that direction. Rimuru pointed to a mountain and they headed there. The students and Aiko were very tired and one of them even said, Aren't we supposed to be tougher than the others? You are monsters. However they asked to come along, so they didn't ask to rest. They arrived in a part of the forest that was destroyed. This part seemed to have received a powerful and precise attack. The devastation in the forest was like someone passing a spoon in ice cream. I don't know of any monster that can do that. Hajime spoke thoughtfully. Rimuru knew some monsters that could do that, but he didn't know if they existed in this world as well. The students and Aiko seemed frightened by this devastation. Let's go further over there. They arrived at a place full of spoils. There were bodies and weapons and things like that. They looked around and Rimuru seemed to find something. I found it, behind the waterfall. Rimuru pointed to the waterfall that could be seen past the trees. Really? Is there anyone alive there? Yes. Everyone was surprised at that. They went to the spot as quickly as possible. Yu used a wind magic to open the waterfall and left everyone shocked, except Rimuru, Hajime and the group. They entered the cave and saw a fainted blonde boy. Rimuru threw a healing potion on him, but the boy remained unconscious. Hajime approached him and tap he gave a jab waking the boy up. Chloe muttered, 
Hajime-kun has to learn good manners, but Hajime ignored her. Are you Will Kadetta? Huh. The boy looked confused. Tap, ow. Answer my question or I'll keep beating you. Are you Will Kadetta? Yes. Yes I am. We were sent by the branch director to rescue you. Ilwa-san? You guys must be strong. Wait. Where is that thing? Everyone was curious about what he was talking about. Rimuru approached and asked. What thing? A dragon. A black dragon. That abnormal pressure. Everyone died. Only I survived. He began to cry with guilt that he was alive. No one knew what to say to him. Rimuru was about to say something, but Hajime spoke first. What's wrong with being alive? Huh. It's normal to feel happy to be alive. Standing there crying about being alive is pathetic. But. I have no reason to live anymore. Hajime grabbed Will by the collar. If you think you have no reason to live, fight. Fight to stay alive and one day that survival will make sense. Standing there crying won't help those who are gone. Staying alive. Everyone felt the weight of Hajime's words. They understood that Hajime must have gone through a horrible experience to survive. Will looked a little better at Hajime's words and everyone left the cave. At this moment, Roar, a black dragon appeared.